ECG or electrocardiograms. They detect the electrical signals associated with the cardiac activity and produce an ECG. It is a graphic record of the voltage versus time. So they are used to diagnose and assist in the treating some types of heart diseases and arrhythmias which determine a patient's response to drug therapy and they reveal their trends or changes in their heart function. So the multi-channel electrocardiographs, they record signals from two or more leads simultaneously and are frequently used in the place of single channel units. Some electrocardiographs can perform automatic measurement and interpretation of the ECG as a selectable or optional feature. So how do this machine looks like? ECG units consist of the ECG unit electrodes and the cables. The 12 lead system includes three different types of LEDs. It is bipolar, augmented, and unipolar and even precordial. Each of the 12 standard LEDs present a different perspective of the heart's electrical activity, like uh, producing ECG waveforms in which uh, the P waves, QRS complex and T waves vary in amplitude and polarity. I know this is much complex, so let's leave it. I don't want to make this episode more complex. Single channel ECGs record the electrical signals from only one lead or only one area configuration at the same time. Although they may receive electrical signals from as many as 12 leads, non-interpretive multi-channel or electrocardiographs only record the electrical signal from the electrodes. They do not use any internal procedure for their interpretation. Did you know electrocardiographs record small voltages of about even 1 millivolt that appear on the skin as a result of the cardiac activity? This voltage difference between the electrodes are measured. These differences directly correspond to the heart's electrical activity. So let's talk about more about this equipment. After the electrodes are attached, the user selects automatic or manual lead switch. Signal sensitivity, frequency response range and charge speed. We have to optimize it manually. In some units, the operator can or choose the leads grouping, I mean the 12 leads grouping, their sequence and even the recording duration of each group. In standard 12 leads tracing, signals from each group of the leads can be recorded for 2.5 seconds. For a rhythmic strip, one let is recorded for a full 12 seconds. Defibrillators or fully automated external defibrillators or in short AEGs. So they deliver high amplitude current impulse to the heart in order to restore normal rhythm and contractile function in patients who are experiencing VF or ventricular fibrillation. So how do this product look like? They automatically charge and discharge to deliver a shock in us. Semi-automated units analyze the ECG and charge in preparation for a shock delivery, but the operator should activate it. AEDs typically include a memory module or PC data card, a display to give a status message and the display of the ECG waveform can be seen too, or in order to prompt the user to initiate a shock, these are necessary. AEDs analyze the ECG rhythm to determine if a defibrillation shock is needed or not. Other than that, they also have to analyze everything. It is the defibrillators wants the operator and it automatically charges and even discharges. Most of these defibrillators use a single pair of disposable electrodes to monitor the ECG and deliver the defibrillator charge. Automated defibrillators requires very little training and operational skill. So what do they do? So the operator comes. He attaches two adhesive defibrillator electrodes to the cables or directly to the AED and applies the electrode to the patient. So this AED will automatically analyze the rhythm to determine whether this defibrillation is necessary or not. In fully automatic models, a shock is then automatically delivered when the rhythm analysis determines it is necessary. In semi-automatic units, the user or the operator have to prompt to deliver the shock. Hemodialysis unit. This is a device that performs extracorporeal dialysis to replace the main activity of the kidneys in patients who are experiencing impaired renal function, such as those with the end stage renal diseases. So, the blood is taken via the extracorporeal circuit. They are then passed through the dialyzer and returned to the patient. Each system 
has its own monitor and control units. The delivery system prepares dialysate, a solution of purified water with an electrolyte composition similar to that of blood, and it is delivered to the dialyzer. The external blood delivery system circulates a portion of the patient's blood through the dialyzer and returned to the patient. This dialyzer is a disposable component in which solute exchange of clearance clearly takes place. CT scanners are used for a wide variety of diagnostic procedures, including spine, head injuries, lesions, abdominal and pelvic malignancies, to even examine the cerebral ventricles, the chest wall, and the large blood vessels, and even to assess musculoskeletal degeneration. So the device consists of an X-ray subsystem, a gantry, a patient table and a controlling computer. A high voltage X-ray generator supplies electric power to the X-ray tube, usually has a rotating anode and is capable of withstanding the high heat loads generated during the rapid multiple slice excision. It's complex. The gantry housing, the X-ray tube, the X-ray generator, detector system, collimators and the rotational frame are the major components of this machine. CT scanners, they use a slip ring technology which was introduced in the 1989. Slip ring scanners can perform helical CT scan in which the X-ray tube and the detectors rotate around the patient's body. They continuously acquire data while the patient moves through the gantry. The acquired volume of the data can be reconstructed at any point during the scan. All modern CT scanners are multi-slice. Inside the gantry, an X-ray tube projects a fan-shaped X-ray beam through the patient to the detector array. As the X-ray tube and the detector rotate, X-rays are detected so the computer mathematically reconstructs the data from each patient. So during a CT scan, the table moves the patient into the gantry and the X-ray tube rotates around the As X-ray passes through the patient to the detectors, the computer acquires and processes data to form an image.